Flamethrower flow, let it hit, cause that boy a chameleon I need a million, billion, trillion tokens to buy up a house in Vermillion I need to kill me a couple of trainers and take all they pokey, they stash in my pocket Jesse James like I roll with Team Rocket Giga drain on that clout with that hot pit, I'm in a mosh pit Huh, what? Hey, what? Oh, I'm black, I'm back, and I'm better than before I'm not like your dad, I returned from the stoke Did you just dead ass crack a dad joke in 2019? Come on, man, just hang it up. What's poppin' though? Your boy Shino is here. You hurt, you hurt, you hurt. What's Gucci? Y'all thought like I was just gonna drop these two videos and just skedaddle on y'all. You know, you have to walk in and out y'all life and just be like, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Nah, I'm back. So the last video, as you guys know, we talked about some uh, edgy exposing. Or oh, you talking about the video where you got caught watching hentai. Yeah, that video. And then we talked about, you know, my returning and the weirdo being on the screen. But nonetheless, your boy's back. I'm black. I'm better than before. I'm not like your dad. I came back from the stuff. Did he really just say that again? What's popping though? Like, today we're gonna be talking about Border Toe. I know you guys are like, you know, this that BS I be talking about. You did all that complaining about reviewing Border Toe, but now you want to talk about Border Toe. Oh, Lord. But there's enough stuff going on in Border Toe world right now that we could talk about it. You know, there's enough information and enough stuff happening happening in the anime art. Bro, you've been missing for like a whole last six years. Of course they got enough information. As well as the manga for me to talk about it, but mind you, I'm gonna put it around the other content that I plan on putting out. So you might see something regarding Boruto right away. Hey, but real rap no cap though. Y'all should check out them last two videos, the link in the description. Or you might see something completely unrelated to Boruto in the slightest, you know what I'm saying? It might be completely out of left. So, you know, if you stay in tune to the channel, stay tuned in case you might get that Boruto drop. This man say might like he ain't been reading the manga faithfully, even though he ain't been talking about that shit. So so, as y'all know, there's this like time travel arc in Border to Naruto Next Generations. Oh really? It's not like there was a 28th anniversary poster for it, dummy. And it's like 20 episodes in. Obviously, Yuri the Shiki has returned. Alright, real rap no cap. Why was this man AFK for like legit half of the series after he showed up? Like, what the hell your Shiki been doing this whole time? You know, they got a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of cool, intricate things that's going on, but there's a lot of stuff that make fans just let sit back and just be like, yo, what? Look at him. It's only two minutes into the video and he about to come. What is this? Like, what is this? What am I actually looking at? Why did you do this? There's so much potential in the Boruto anime, it's ridiculous. Now, how much of that potential is being wasted? I'm about to tell you. So on some real rap, no cap stuff. We know Yoroshiki versus Sasuke was gonna happen eventually. You knew that was gonna see them two like fight it out because as you guys know, if you've been keeping up with anime, Boruto and Sasuke went through the time portal together. Boruto and Sasuke went time traveling together? No way. We knew that already, dummy. They went boat into the hidden leaf in the past because we know Yoroshiki is going after Naruto. He's trying to get the nine tail beast outside of Naruto before Naruto learns how to manifest and control his powers properly because he knows right now Naruto is a bit of a handful and it, it, it's just something he can't deal with right well duh naruto can singly hand the single the whole entire ninjaverse nobody in the world can stop him you stupid idiot you know he, naruto gonna come in there he's gonna run his feet he's gonna put him down in the ground make him eat some dirt you know what i'm saying and you know naruto put him work let's be real here if naruto could just solo the whole entire ninjaverse will we really honestly be having a boruto would it honestly be worth watching if this man could just body everybody come on now stop playing it's literally gonna be one of those situations where naruto's gonna basically fight him out till he's tired then like finesse him and when i say finesse him y'all know what i mean i'm talking about the power of friendship my friends are my power talk no jutsu all that same way they did momoshiki you know they had this little finessing going on and they they finesse momoshiki on the real boruto was the ultimate finesse because this man had the ability to chat trakura with the renegade he just looked at it and say oh it disappeared like and he got smacked he said he knows for a fact that at some point or another he probably was gonna get finesse so you know she get thought his best bet was to say hey I'ma just go get you when you was like 10, 12, 11, 2, you know what I'm saying? I ain't even gonna hold you. Yurashiki was smart for that. He knew he couldn't beat him in the future, so he was like, yeah, you know what? I'ma snatch you up in the past. And I'ma just nip this in the bud real quick, real lippity slippity, you know what I'm saying? Moving fastity dippity, because you know, it's like, why not? Like, it's, it's the best thing. Like, because if I go after you right now while you're strong, I'ma actually have to work, you know what I'm saying? Versus when I can go after you when you don't have control of the nine tails, it, it could be a lot easier. To be honest, it's probably the smartest thing i've seen any villain in naruto do like this man dead as went back in the time to do some shit like what now as you know in boruto we've seen sasuke and naruto and have this rivalry right we get to see like a lot of different recaps in this time travel art if you've been paying attention you know you see the interaction between sasuke and naruto even though it's naruto doesn't know it's sasuke and he talks about sasuke in this lighting where it's like hey you know i have this friend that i want to protect he is my rival he is somebody that you know i want to be able to get to come back to the village and stuff like that and you see sasuke's emotions towards naruto manifest i'm gonna keep it a buck this was super dope 
to see. I was really grateful that we got to see the moment of Sasuke truly understanding how Naruto felt about him during that time period and that he got a better understanding of Naruto's emotions, even further than what we saw in the past. So like I said, there were a lot of intricate moments in here. There was a lot of things that had a lot of positivity to offer. They had a lot of different things that showed a lot of refreshing senses from the Boruto to the Naruto experience. You know, well, from the Naruto to the Boruto experience, if we want to be politically correct. You know, we see how Naruto had the engagement with Sasuke, you know what I'm saying? And he basically showed Sasuke his feelings. And you know, he saw the side of uh, Naruto that he didn't get to see at that age. And he realizes that even though they were older and Naruto was continuing along this agenda of bringing his friend back, he saw it in the beginning stages. You know, he saw it right after he left the village. Because around this time, this is when Naruto was learning how to use the Rasengan. He was going under training on Jiraiya. You know what I'm saying? He was getting close to Jiraiya and, you know, building that bond in order to be able to get that power and manifest the power of the Nine Tails as well as bring Sasuke back. During this time travel arc, we also seen a lot of different intricate things because we see the bond between Naruto and Jiraiya being explained. And you know, we seen Boruto and Sasuke actually getting the first glance of that. We're actually seeing these two, you know, work forward and try to progress and become a teacher and a sensei. And they're looking at Naruto and Jiraiya as a role model example. But Sasuke even notes that at some point, we're never going to compete with them because they're on a whole different level. You know what I'm saying? In terms of their bond, in terms of their friendship. Naruto and Jirai was like a grandfather and a grandson. It was more like a best friend. It was more like a real sensei like, slash family membership. But you know, Boruto calls Sasuke his uncle, so aren't they kind of like family too? Well, duh. That's not the point I'm trying to make here. Jesus. You know, it wasn't just like, hey, let me just teach you how to do this. I'm gonna look at you because I know you got the nine tails because I gotta protect you. I don't really wanna be bothered with you. You know, type of vibe. These two actually got along. They had a lot of the same similarities. They had a lot of the same the quirky personality. They both was very interesting and intricate the individuals that clicked really well. Versus Boruto and Sasuke are a bit different. Now, I know a lot of people are like, well, Boruto is just like Sasuke. Like, I get it. They are along the prodigy lines. But if you look at Sasuke, Sasuke was a lot darker than in Boruto early on due to his traumatic experiences and you still got the Boruto that has the fundamental the key elements that create him being Naruto in a new lighting you know what I'm saying even though he's a prodigy he still has those elements that make him much like Naruto he has those elements that make him much like Hinata you know obviously he has the traits and stuff in terms of learning and being a prodigy like Sasuke so that could probably progress him and make him learn a lot of different things on a way faster scale right right but nonetheless he's still nonetheless a lot like Naruto you know so it's gonna take a lot of more bonding and development for Sasuke to understand it because as you guys know this man Sasuke cold to his own daughter how you think he gonna open up to this random kid now don't get me wrong we seen him do a lot more speaking to Boruto than we seen him do to Sarda but at some point or another you know he, he's eventually gonna be able to understand and relate those emotional messages because Boruto is gonna probably break him down even further than Naruto did in the time that it took Naruto to get him to come back to the village just y'all wait mark my words there's gonna be an extremely emotional moment between Boruto to and Sasuke and I'm talking about it's gonna leave all of us shook I don't know if he's gonna die or not but I'm saying that some shit's gonna go down and we all gonna just be looking at the fucking TV or reading the manga like hello another thing that was very intricate that I liked about this arc was the engagements between Boruto and the Konoha 11 now I know you guys are probably wondering what well he interacts with them anyway in the everyday day to basis in in the regular world but no not necessarily in this time period this is the de developmental time period you know what I'm saying we get to see him in, in engage with Neji you know, he get to see how much of a badass Neji was. This is around the time period when Neji was still kind of hard body. You know, he still looked at everybody as an idiot, as a failure. He believed in the so-called thing as destiny. He was like, there's no such thing as you controlling your own destiny. He believed that fate belonged to the person who you, who controlled you. You know, at the end of the day, he was like, hey, I'm nothing but a tool, but I'm, I'm better than you. I'm a prodigy. I'm gonna always be better than you. That's just the way fate wanted to be. There is no such thing as you could get better even though you were worse. You know what I'm saying? There was no such thing as progression to Neji. Now, around this time period, this is when Naruto folded him and made him open up. Now, also, what I liked about this, too, was that Boruto get to see Neji. He gets to see Neji and understand Neji a little bit because they're a lot alike. You know, his name is Neji, which means screw. Boruto name is uh, Bolt. You know, basically, Boruto means Bolt. And essentially, we see these two get to interact, you know, and obviously, it's really dope because we see Boruto hear all these stories from Hinata and we see them, like, praying to the flower and stuff like that. They go visit his grave, but Boruto never actually got to met Neji because he died to a goddamn splinter uh, tch, listen that still to this day will be the bane of my existence in naruto but chino we all know it was plot armor for him to get with hinata so it honestly had to go no it didn't it really didn't have to happen like that 
but like I said, it was really cool just to see those engagements. But one thing that really bothers me about this whole entire arc, right? I know a lot of people probably wondering why you named the video this title. If you look at this arc and then you read the current chapters of the manga, you're gonna probably think to yourself, like, did Boruto really gain anything from this arc? Cause like, this is supposed to be development, right? This is supposed to be the ultimate development for Boruto in terms of understanding Naruto, in terms of getting closer with Naruto and perceiving the information that Naruto is trying to deliver. So at this point or another, this is letting me know that the anime is gonna have a lot of different dialogue compared to what's going on in the manga. Cause if you guys remember, if we go back to like chapter 16, even if we go back to a little earlier chapters during the Mugen arc, there's different parts of the arc where we see Boruto still don't really respect Naruto. You know, it's still like he treat him like, you know, hey, he's just the Hokage, he's boring, he's this, he's that. But mind you, you know, he went back in the past and he saw the trials and tribulations that Naruto had to go through to get to where he's at. So I'm thinking to myself like, yo, this is supposed to be a game changer. This is supposed to be something that opened your eyes and give you a bit of understanding of your dad. But guess what? Orto wasn't trying to hear that shit. Now, if you go back into the Mugen arc, there are different time periods where you see Boruto still show that disrespect to Naruto in his own right. Now, don't get me wrong, he listens to Naruto in terms of carrying out the orders, but if you look and you see where he's basically being told he has to like look after this kid and then you go a little bit down the storyboard, you see Boruto is looking for the specific ninja info card, right? You know they got the trade card game going on. I see they got gotchas in Naruto well. I see what y'all doing. Y'all got an agenda and y'all gotcha, trying to bitch. make us fall under. But nonetheless, you know he's looking for the specific card and he keeps getting the seventh hokage's card but at the same time you still see that same disrespect you see naruto telling him to do specific missions he telling him you know why do i have to do this you know he didn't want to look after the kid he was talking about why i gotta lift this look at this stupid kid and then if you go even further into like chapter 16 you know what i'm saying around that time period you see them two fighting and he still underestimates naruto's abilities now obviously as the manga progresses he starts to respect him more but you would think after this development mental art where you go back in time where you specifically go to that time period where your dad was at his weakest form you know what i'm saying when his dad wasn't as strong as or renowned as he was and he was hated by the entire village you would think he would take those remnants and pieces and bring that and you know change a little bit but in the manga you know what i'm saying he isn't really changing he's not different than in the manga that he would be in, in the TV show, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you would think that he would took those key elements from the time arc and then apply them in the future, but if you look at the future of the manga, which is a lot of, lot of stuff ahead of what's happening currently in the anime, he still has that disrespect. You know what I'm saying? He's always saying his dad is boring. All he does is sit at a desk. He's not that great, even though he's the Hokage. He says a lot of snarky shit. Honestly, if Boruto had caught that fire ass open, we wouldn't be having none of these problems in the anime. Now I know some of y'all gonna write that off as a child being a child, and a child's gonna act like a child. I, I get it. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. I, I understand. You know, sometimes kids don't completely under, uh, agree with their dad, their parents' logic, but at the same time. He still knocked Naruto in certain aspects of like being a Hokage. He talks about how he's boring, he says that that's all day he does paperwork, he's not cool, but he knows how strong Naruto is. So it's like he's still like undermining and like just being mad, disrespectful. So like what honestly did he take from this arc? What is he gonna gain from this arc unless they completely sway the hell out of the dialogue? You know what I'm saying? He's not gonna really take anything from it. Aside from that, there's a lot of nitpicks I could do with this arc, you know what I'm saying? I could go into full on attack mode and just go ahead and just, just tear it apart but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna accept the art for what it was because at this point, in the anime, we're accepting things for what they are and what they're gonna be. You know, Toto's vacation, uh, not Toto's vacation, uh, Toto's little arc where she got engaged with that uh, one actor guy, you know what I'm saying? We got Sumire and her friends playing with the animals and shit. Then we got Mirai's adventure uh, vacation shit. And I'll listen, listen, Linda, listen. There is some shit in here that you gotta just be like, oh no, to the hell no, no, like bro. It's just like, you know, there's a lot of different things in here where it was just like, you know, we get to see like Boruto do this and stuff. And then we have these moments where things could be a little bit better in terms of animation, you know, the way they have this plot armor going on. It's just a lot of stuff in anime right now that's just like, yo, what? Like I saw Sasuke get stepped on, bro. I saw one of the strongest shinobis in the world literally get nigga stepped on his shoulders and then he stood on him. Liter Top of the morning to you. Like, what's bracket? Like, bro, what? 
what actually happened? Yudashiki faded him like it was nothing, as if he was no challenge. And then we got Jiraiya and Naruto right there, but you gotta think about it. At this point, Naruto and Sasuke had surpassed Jiraiya and everybody that was in the previous Shinobi rankings. You know what I'm saying? So we got Sasuke, who was like the right hand man to Naruto, who's the equivalent of his power, you know, getting faded by Yudashiki. So what the heck is Boruto? Jiraiya and Naruto are supposed to do now don't get me wrong they could probably come up with some strategies because we seen Shikamaru go up against an enemy that was completely stronger than him in a whole different tier but at the same time I don't see nothing detrimental happening I say this for the sake of the manga because I read the manga a lot and I read it from chapter to chapter and I read how snarky he still is to Naruto in terms of disrespect you would think at some point or another he will finally get that his dad is a very important individual and he understands the trials and tribulations and this arc will be that defining key to help him realize that but no not in the manga let me know how you feel about this arc regarding you know the the stuff that's happened with the animation the storyboard you know what was your favorite part of it let me know how you feel about it i might go back to doing daily reviews not well, daily hell no i never do daily probably weekly reviews but at some point or another you know we gotta have to do sit downs and talk about it because we just talked about it and let's just keep it real like Boruto, you gotta do something with this animation bro you got a lot of good potential in these arcs but these animation this animation is trash this animation is not getting it bro like there's a lot of beautiful things that is taking place in the Boruto world that could be turned into something gold something like diamonds there's a lot of diamonds in the rough in it but the animation in certain aspects of this art is absolutely terrible like i i kid you not it's awful bro like you guys gotta understand like at some point or another enough is enough look at this man shino talking eh, you acting like your opinion matter ain't nobody trying to hear that shit bro like what listen if you ain't telling me bored to the best anime in 2019 i don't want to talk you heard you heard Nah, I'm gonna keep it a bug. I kind of agree with him. I'm just talking shit right now. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. And with that being said, uh, tell him he ugly in the comment section because uh, he definitely stink, smell like tilapia, and he, uh, yeah, he like a stick bug. I'm out.